Hi, I'm Scav, and I'm an architecture critic. Welcome to The Extra Office, a channel where I do architecture critiques of video games. If you want to join me live, please find my Twitch below. And to support my endeavors, please find me on Patreon, which is also linked below. Let's get started. Let's go and check out Goron City and uh, look at its differences. Both are obviously very warm. Um, and while uh, Gerudo Town attempts to keep you cool as a visitor, um, or tries to, even though it's not that good at shade, and I'm not so sure that that water would work, it's obviously uh, what the what the designers intended you to feel. Goron City is not quite so accommodating. Um, it's like it, it, Goron City re requires you to uh, to change a lot. Now, I had to change into a woman to be allowed to be in that city, but otherwise, um, I just had to keep myself cool. Um, Goron City, I need to wear this fireproof outfit, right? Um, and uh, you can see we're already talking about a very different, uh, this is Goron City, and we're already talking about a very different um, type of urban environment where um, right, actually let's zoom out a little bit. So we used to be in a desert. Now we're on the way to Death Mountain in the lava. And that we're on Death Mountain already situates us uh, in a very harsh climate, a very harsh physical, maybe not climate, but uh, harsh physical conditions. And um, this road it sort of winds through up to the mountain, right? Goes like that. Um, Goron City is right in the middle of the road and uh, the road intersects. So there is a kind of start point and a finish point on Goron City. Okay, now let's take the plunge into Goron City. This is it, right? Not so centralized, right? It is defensible, but there's only like a kind of gate, like some of the other cities. And it's really just a harsh, uh, harsh condition. I love, yeah, so the Gorons can um, roll like that. Pretty sick. But let's start with the sort of main, main area here, which is the, of course, the throne room. Yeah, awesome approach to Goron City. The, the approach um, to this one is really fun coming around the bend. Um, but here's the throne room, and what you'll notice, or what immediately strikes my attention in Goron City, is the difference um, with Gerudo Town, is that in Gerudo Town you, it's very hot, so you try to keep cool. In Goron City, it's very hot. That's it. You know, it's like it, it's very hot. There's lava in the throne room. So there's something else to it. Um, there's something else going on in here. You sleep in a bed of rocks. Um, you got to be tough, not so accommodating to other bodies. Um, I love the faux columns here. Like, like we're going to stack rocks up to the ceiling just, just because to kind of decorate. And there's this like chain link thing. Um, but that's as much uh, that's as much as we see when it comes to the decoration of this place. And even the throne itself is just kind of like bashed together bits of steel. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so if you fall in the lava, you you, uh, you get hurt and you have to like respawn. Um, and that exists, that's everywhere, that's here. Like if I jump in that same thing will happen. Um, and that that's kind of terrifying uh, about, about this place, about Goron City. Um, now the, let's see, let's look at it. The two biggest buildings uh, here and here both belong to the king. Uh, who's also got this crazy uh, large physical stature in in comparison to the rest. Now, in um, we see that in Rito and in Zora, 
and in Goron, but not Gerudo Town. Gerudo Town uh, is the only place in which the leader is not the uh, most physically threatening. Hmm, something to that, maybe. Something to that, maybe. Uh, so this is the king, like the, the king's house. Uh, but it is, but it is communal. It's very communal living, right? It's not like he sleeps by himself or anything like that. Um, and I love, I love, love, love that there's a kind of like a tic-tac-toe board game here. That might be my favorite detail in Goron City. I, I do feel like the town itself is, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, like, uh, there's a lot of things I love about it. I love the music. Actually, I, I love the music, maybe the most. Um, it's very like, I don't know, kind of reminds me of like a jazzy, like New Orleans kind of. Uh... Okay. The King's throne room and home are the two biggest places here. But I think that the, there are some things. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, this is the inn. So what I mean, it it leaves a lot to be desired. Is that there's, there's not much more aside from those two rooms, uh, the inn, and then there's a couple of stores, um, and then like houses. And this building, we don't really know. This m must be like barracks, right? Um, because there's a lot of, it, it, again, there's no markings. This building isn't marked for anything. It's not a religious area. There's really no, there's really no like church or anything like that. Um, like a few of the other towns, but there is a, a, a communal living area. And most of the architecture, the buildings themselves are simply carved rock or molten rock. Um, here we've got a kind of vertical support. It looks like a support structure in the ceiling, but that's really just probably to hang stuff. Um, it's not like a structural element at all. Uh, and the columns in the king's throne room were pretty probably fake, right? Like you don't need to actually support anything, but you might uh, you might want to kind of fake, uh, like like yeah, there's I don't know. Okay, this looks this looks legit. This looks more like the mining um, areas. Oh, here's the. Um, you can see the counter height difference. Look at that, guys. Look at the counter height difference. I guess this might count, but that looks more like just the the area where. Um, the area that he like lifts the this dude lifts that thing up so that he can leave. Um, but this, this counter to me says a lot about the architecture in these two cities. Look at that. Um, that's almost, that's like up to my neck, right? Um, he's very comfortable though. This dude's comfortable. These small details, um, these small details as to how, how these buildings come together and create uh, uh, the, the literal material conditions of my my interactions there, uh, that means a great deal. That means a great deal. So here's the other, so other than the king's house and that barracks, this is the only other like home. Uh, but as you can see, it's also very communal. There's a table, there's your hard hat, because you're uh, you're a worker. It's all very working class. There's hammers everywhere. Um, it's a mining town. The beds, as you can see, we're going to check the inn because the beds here, uh, I like how the beds are are very particular in the uh, body of the user. And I do think that some of the cities, the ability to create spatial experiences that reflect the uniqueness of the bodies that inhabit the cities, to me, uh, is a unique part about how you can start to reinvent architecture in video games or reinvent or invent 
architectural spaces in video games in different ways that uh, showcase architectures built for different bodies other than a kind of normal human figure. Uh, so I do appreciate the beds as they suggest uh, a totally different type of body and a totally different uh, idea of comfort. Um, that I dig. That I dig. Now, uh, in the inn, what do the beds look like for travelers? Well, let's check out the inn. There's, well, it's all it's all the same kind of carved interior space. There's a little bit of this like rail rail lines for both stability and to hang things off of. Oh, look at that! Oh, you notice anything? The Inn for Travelers has a step. It's still about up to my neck, but maybe I get a few more inches on here. That's kind of unique. I like that. I like that more, right? Uh, but there's a clear attention to counter height. There's a clear attention to counter height. That's very strange. Now, the beds. Ah, okay, here we go. The beds for Travelers are uh, for different body types. There's a Gerudo asleep. Ramella over here. Taking a nap. There is a window. There's some cross ventilation, but man, it would be hot in here. I do, they don't really mitigate, they don't really mitigate the heat. <laughs> but at least the inn, the inn might be the coolest room because of all the cross ventilation. And the Goron, of course, need no cross ventilation. They like it hot, and so hot it stays. There's also a step up here for the, the to, to purchase these goods. That's kind of nice. So the counters, where, where was the counter not? Okay, the counter in the clothing store, that's strange. Uh, they seem to, to pay attention to counter height and now, um, but then I'm like, well, you know why? Oh, here we go. See, the counter's too high. Ah. Oh, come on. And it will char. Seared steak. Eh, more like a charred steak over here. I, like I'll say seared steak. <laughs> Decent. Decent. Well, let's see. I, I do love that there's this this bridge that you can go over top. Um, let's see if we can get up there. Oh yeah, see that? See the hand? That's very cool, isn't it? Very cool. That's the most sculptural element in the Goron's uh, vocab here. A beautiful piece of sculpture that welcomes you. Uh, the bridge over over the top of the whole city. Uh, a little rickety, a little dangerous, in need of some repair. Well, we see the way it's laid out and organized. It's very organic, you know, uh, goes with the flow of the lava and uh, probably gets built and t tinkered with and rebuilt and knocked in and um, does a lot of different different things. There's probably a lot of shifts. I guess if you could, if you could say one element that I didn't think about bringing up is the fact that this place is probably constantly in flux, right? As such, um, you know, it's a little more raw, a little more thrown together, a little more rough hewn. And in that way, I think it represents, oh, is that another arm? A lot of hands. That's another hand. Huh? Um, in that case, it, it represents a different kind of attitude towards what space might be and how um, maybe we could be more respectful of the ground under our feet and allow it to shift and allow that shifting to uh, create, create different um, create different types of spaces for us. Oh, you're right. Okay, yeah. It is. There's his face. <laughs> it's one big Goron sculpture. Oh, and there's some little kids. Look at this. Look at this view. 
We're doing it, everybody. We're doing it. Oh, that he's making a. He's making a. Oh, that's great. He's making um. This thing. I don't know what that is. What do you call it? A flex. He's flexing. Um. But that is that is really cute. It's a lot more playful. Oh, what's up? Ramella's awake. How did you sleep? Was it like hot? I guess you're kind of used to that. But that this place must be constantly shifting. And so like just the sort of slump of earth with these steel of oh, God, those would be hot. But with these steel plates just kind of there um, does make me feel like they understand that the, the earth and the, the plates underneath it are always in flux. It's always getting getting redone. I think that's pretty cool. Well, pretty neat, pretty neat city. Um, there are a lot of ramps here. There are a lot of ramps. I don't really see many stairs, if any. Uh, just kind of uh, helping you get in here. Like this slumpy earth as, a, as like a rickety thing. Otherwise, everything's very smooth. Uh, but nothing's flat, right? There's no flat ground. I think that's interesting. They didn't bother to like flatten out much. It's all sort of stomped. Um, so I'd suggest it's like, it's like, uh, very reflective and, of, uh, reflective of the material it's built out of. It is, it, because it does have this strong worker culture and, uh, clear like barracks and, uh, uh, unity of the workers. I, I, I also, I kind of, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure if it's, if it's what I think, but the way it's built suggests, uh, there aren't many sort of, uh, the whole, the whole, the way the whole game is built suggests there's not many codes or ideas about uh, different types of bodies. But all right, beautiful. There's Goron City. Thanks for listening. Of course, please like, share, and subscribe to get more videos like this. Comment down below what game you think I should do next. Come find me on Patreon to support my work and see me live on Twitch to join in the fun. See you next time.